early today, but we have some other things that we want to finish, so I thought we'd get this um, going earlier. Okay. Sounds good. So I hope you guys all have been having a good week. We've been busy out here. Um, last time I met with you guys last week, you saw all the electrical wires that were put in the wall. And remember, they sprayed for um, the termite prevention, and they put in some special wires to prevent bugs. Um, so this week, what they did is they went ahead and filled up the walls with insulation and covered them with drywall. So I'm going to show you some pictures. I know I haven't put them on. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing that they do before they fill the walls with insulation is they have to prepare the house. So they cover the windows with like this plastic so they make sure the insulation doesn't get into the mechanisms that open and shut the windows so that way the windows will stay working after the insulation is in so they cover those up then they take these cardboard boxes and um, they go ahead and put them in between where the top of the wall meets the roof so that way when they blow the insulation in, it doesn't go out through the roof because they didn't finish um, installing the perimeter of the roof, which seals it up. So they go ahead and put those cardboard boxes in. Then they take um, a seal and they go ahead and seal all the openings in the walls with this like fire-resistant seal. So when they fill up, um, when they spray in the insulation, it just nothing gets in through those holes. So they fill up where all the wires go in, where all the pipes are. They go ahead and seal up all those holes to make sure that no air can get through. Then the next thing that they do to prepare is they take this kind of a mesh material and anywhere where they have to blow the insulation in through the ceiling to make sure it doesn't fall down. They put this net to catch the insulation so it doesn't fall down. This wall they also put the net up so the insulation doesn't go through. Then what they do is they take these little rulers and they, they tape them up here in what will be the attic. So that way, after they spray the insulation into the attic, an inspector can come and make sure they put the right amount. So this is just like a ruler. It goes up to 20 inches, and uh, that way they can measure to see that when the insulation is sprayed, it goes to the right point. Now, there's two different types of insulation that we put in the house. And the insulation goes in the walls and what its purpose is is to make sure that when your house is that your house stays warm in the winter and cold in the summer and it's supposed to make it so that way it seals all the air gaps so that way when your air conditioning is running it keeps the home cool and and hot very efficiently so you don't want the air to leak out through all the gaps in the walls or windows so we fill it up with this insulation to make sure that all the air stays in the house and keeps you nice and cool so this is fiberglass it's called fiberglass bat and what they do is they take this insulation and this is what it looks like when it's out of the bag and they put this in all the parts of the wall that are difficult to reach okay so you can see here this is what it looks like they put it in these are um, this is like tall walls, so they put them up here where it's difficult to reach, the fiberglass bat. They also put it here, this is going to be a tray in the ceiling. You can see this is the guy, he just picks it up and he puts it into place and then he tapes it to the metal to make sure it doesn't move. And then the next part, and this is a special type of insulation that we do, which makes our homes very energy efficient, is we, there's this big truck, and inside the truck, you'll see there's a bunch of different bags, and what's inside of these bags is actually 
um, I'll show you a, close, a better picture, is this material. And what this is, this is actually recycled newspaper. So it's recycled newspaper that's ground up and all mushed together. And then they put some sort of like sticky material on it too to get make it all stick together. And so all this recycled and sticky material is in this truck in um, all these bags. And these bags go through these machines and they get pumped through this pump and they blow the insulation into all the walls. Now this is very energy efficient because when it's blown in the walls, I'm going to show you, it makes sure it gets into every single corner and crack in the house. That way no air can get through. So um, here we are. Here's the truck. You can see it's going through these tubes. And then here's the guy. He's up here on a ladder and he's blowing it. He's, and he's blowing it in the walls. And I'm going to show you a little video of it. It's very dusty. So you see he's blowing it on all the walls. And it gets everywhere. And then while he's blowing it through the walls, this guy has the hose and he's he's sucking up all the excess insulation that falls on the floor so that way it can be reused. And then what they do, he takes a roller and he knocks it down to make it smooth. So I'm going to show you a quick video so you can see exactly what it looked like when he was doing it. Question for her. What do you need? Sure, it is Chris. What's the following? And he's sucking up the insulation. And then he rolls it down. Got a balance. Like, if this is a question to Laura, you're going to have to wait. I'm glad you guys have more time. You can see they have a mask over their face so they don't breathe in all the insulation. It gets very dusty. So then after they're done blowing it in, you can see this is what the walls look like. Remember, there's all sorts of different wires in the walls. Now they're all covered up with this insulation. So that way your, your, your home will stay nice and cool. These were those cardboard boxes that prevented the insulation from blowing out through the roof. It gets over all the little wires. And now that the insulation is in the house, the next thing they can do is they can cover up the walls. So that way you get to start to really see what the walls look like. So now that the insulation's in, we, it's time to deliver the drywall. Now the drywall comes in boards, and this is what you use to cover the walls. It's very heavy, so they have a special truck that delivers it. And what this truck does is it picks up the drywall, it turns it on its side, and it actually moves it through the front door of the house. You see here? So then the guys take it off of the machine and they put it on a cart and they wheel it into the house and they stack it up. Now this drywall is so heavy that the truck actually has a stabilizer. It has like another leg so that way when the boards come off the truck doesn't tip over. So it's a special truck for delivering the drywall. Then once all the drywall is in the house the guys come to install it. So they go ahead and basically they just got drills and they pick the drywall up, they put it on the walls, they do the ceilings first and then the walls and they go ahead and they drill it to the studs and they got to make sure they cut out openings for all the vents and doors and the electrical outlets. And the ceiling they cut out the hole so you can put in the lights and the fans. They have to nail it every 12 inches. So they measure to make sure they put all the nails in evenly every 12 inches on the studs. 
And then you can see this is kind of what it looks like when they finish the room. They've got openings for the closet, for the doors, the vents, outlets, switches, the air conditioning. This is the ceiling. You gotta make sure they gotta make sure they cut out all the openings because you don't want to cover up a window or an outlet or anything. You can see this is um, another room they are just starting in, how it goes right in front of the insulation and they just nail it to these wood studs. Now, they're actually still working on the drywall. They're out there right now. They didn't finish. So next time I meet with you guys, you'll see what, how they finish it up. They have to tape up all the holes and all the seams. This is going to be um, a bathroom sink, so you can see they've got the pipe sticking out. The two guys working there. Here you can see they put the drywall, they had to cut it so it would fit in the ceiling, the tray ceiling, and they cut out for the recessed cans. Um, let me just show you, it's a tray because when you think of a tray that you might have on a table, is that why it looks, it looks kind of like a, a tray? Yeah, it's just kind of like a decorative, it's a decorative um, finish, so that way the, the ceiling looks a little bit more interesting. They usually put it like in a fancier room in the home. So it kind of steps up. And uh, yeah, so that's where we are today. Um, they put in the insulation and they started the drywall. So next time I meet with you guys, the drywall will be finished and I'll show you those pictures. So do you have any, any questions? Oh yeah, we got some questions here. Okay. My name is Emily, and my question is, what happens if there's a sinkhole nearby? <laughs> that is a great question, especially because, um, as you guys know in the news, you've been seeing that there's been certain sinkholes. Well, sinkholes are very popular, are very common in Florida. What happens is there's, there's usually water that runs under the ground, and sometimes that water will dry up and it'll leave an air pocket. And then what will happen is all the weight on top of that air pocket, maybe it'll rain and the, the soil will become heavy and it'll collapse in that hole and you'll get a sinkhole. That, ha that does happen and that's why when you buy a new home, you get homeowner's insurance. And that homeowner's insurance covers so that way in case something happens like a sinkhole, they will pay for the repair and the damage. Now usually what happens is there's like a little sinkhole most of the time it's not, it, it won't, it doesn't affect your home and you'll fill it up with dirt. But sometimes it might affect the structure of your home because now your home isn't sitting, it's, um, you know, it's, uh, there's a hole underneath it. So there's different methods that they use to go ahead and uh, mitigate it. They'll put, they'll fill it with dirt, they might, you know, do something to the structure of the home. Luckily, we haven't personally had any problems with sinkholes affecting any of our homes. Um, but usually, um, they'll just they'll fill it up with dirt, and you'll have your insurance company come and they'll take care of it for you. Hi, my name is Jada. What does the drywall do to the house? The drywall, what it does is it makes it so that way you've got a nice smooth wall. So. You guys saw inside the walls, there's all sorts of wires, and then you've got insulation. This, what this does is it keeps all its stuff on the inside, and that way you can, um, you have a nice smooth wall, you can lean furniture against, you can, um, you know, to close the room. So if you guys look around, you're, I, don't, I think um, inside the classroom, the wall is made out of block, but if you look inside of your home, you'll notice the wall, what that is, is it's actually drywall and behind the drywall there's the wires and the insulation and in the front of it you'll see pretty soon we paint it, we give it a little bit of a texture and it'll start to look just like the walls in your home. Is it? Yes. Um, if termites dig through the wood, will the gas that they put in the wood go through the holes in the side? If the termites eat through the wood, um, what will happen? Is, is that the question? Oh, it, it, 
from the gas that they spray in the wall go outside? Oh. Okay, that's a great question. Actually, what was sprayed on the wall was not a gas, it was a liquid. So it's something that actually sticks to the material. So it's not something that can just go away. And what it does is that it actually deters the termites from eating, from even going close to it. It's like, imagine if you were, um, someone was giving you food, but the food smelled really, really bad. You probably wouldn't even go near it or want to take a bite of it. So that's what the chemical does. It just makes it so that way the termites don't even want to go near it. Um, Emily, if there is a sinkhole near a house, what damage will it do to the house? If it, there's a sinkhole not near the house, what damage is it going to do to the house that's next to it? Yeah. Yes. That's a great question. It depends. There's a couple factors. It depends how big the sinkhole is and how close it is to the house. So usually what will happen is they'll call... Um, you know, they'll call someone who specializes in the sinkholes and they do certain tests that that um, test the ground around the hole. Code green. Okay. Code green. That just code green means all clear. We're all clear. Okay. So um, what they'll do is they'll do t certain tests of soil to make sure that there's no other sinkholes maybe hiding underground and if no sinkholes are, are hiding underground near your home then your house is okay and they'll just fill the hole up with dirt. Um, where does the truck, hi my name is Skyler, where does the truck that brings the drywall get the drywall from? That's a great question. Um, well the drywall is made in a factory and then the drywall is then delivered to a store that sells building materials. Then we order, we call the store and we say we want to order drywall for this house. They'll get it ready at the store and the truck will take it from the store to our house. Oh. Did anyone realize that the insulation was made from recyclable newspaper? That was fascinating to me. Maybe uh, someone can take a question. Do you put, my name's Kate, do you put, um, Insulation in all the houses? Yes, all the homes need to have insulation so that way your home, when you put the air conditioner on, all the cool air or hot air doesn't just escape out into the outside. So the insulation makes sure that your home stays nice and cool or nice and warm, and the insulation goes in all the exterior walls that, you know, are close, that all the exterior walls, and, um, we use the special insulation that's blown in. That's a very special type of thing that not everyone does. That way it makes sure that the walls, every single inch and crack of corner of the wall is filled in with insulation. Go ahead. Anyone have a question? Go ahead, Lauren. Um, Lauren, are you going to install an alarm so if someone breaks in the window it will go off? Oh, nice. Are we going to install alarms? Was that the question? Yeah. Okay, great question. What we do for all of our homeowners is we install the wiring that was part of the, um, we install wiring in the walls and they have little sensors that go on all the windows and doors. So we go ahead and install that and that's called pre-wiring. Then once the person moves into the home, they can decide whether they want to actually activate the security system, so then they'll contact a company. That company will go ahead and punch through the wall, find the wire, and they'll put their little security box inside the keypad. So we make sure that you are able to do a security system if you want to. Then when the people move in, they can decide whether they want to go ahead and install it. Question after we just got through um, our own security system. I'm Catherine. Where is where do you get the newspaper? Where do you get the newspaper? That's a great question. Um, well, the insulation company, actually, they're the ones who mix all the ingredients to make the insulation. So they mix the paper with the sticky solution, different chemicals. Um, they go ahead and mix it, and they put it in those clear packages um, so that way it can be blown through their special machine that's in their truck. They get the newspaper, um, I'm not exactly sure, but they probably get it from recycling plants. Um, they probably have some sort of deal where they can get the paper from there. Anyone else have a question? 
one more question, and then we'll uh, we'll we'll talk about um, our next time we'll meet. What is the heaviest? My name is Kensington. What is the heaviest thing in the house? What is the heaviest um, thing in the house? Is that the question? Yeah, what weighs the most, I assume, correct? Is that what you want? Oh, wow. I'm not sure. That's a great question. There's a lot of really heavy things. I mean, the drywall is definitely heavier, heavy, but so are um, the, uh, the roof trusses. If you guys remember, they have those kind of like, they look like big triangles all attached that um, make the shape of the roof. Those are pretty heavy as well. Um, bundles of shingles are heavy. You saw another machine had to carry those up to the roof. So there's a lot of different materials. Um, also, some materials, they start up light, but then after they get hard um, on the site or after they're attached to other things, they get really heavy too. Um, Lori, next Friday is... Um teacher work day so we will not meet and then it's vacation I had break um, yeah and then Thursday we do have a guest who's doing a lecture about um, staying healthy so I don't think I can meet with you Thursday meaning we could do um, after vacation is that is that okay or sh should we meet next week on Wednesday um, we can meet after vacation uh, that would be great I'm sure I'll have a lot of good stuff to show what you would, what's the next What's the next phase after the walls? The next step is, well, you just saw part of the walls. You saw them putting the drywall up, but then they have to finish it. They have to seal up all the little nail holes, and they texture it. And then the painters will probably come, and they'll start painting. Um, they might also put the stucco on the outside. So we'll see. I'm sure there will be a lot of interesting stuff going on in the next um, two let me just tell them stucco is like the texture on the outside of the house. Yeah, it's it's like a mud that's made out of like a, it's like a cement mud that they put on the outside of the house that gets hard. And uh, that's what makes the house kind of have that look on the outside. Cool. All right, everybody, it was a very exciting, very exciting broadcast today, Lori. I don't know. Have a great spring break, everybody. All right, everyone, say goodbye, Lori. Bye. Oh, my God. Okay, Lori, I'll call you later.